Good morning, everybody. Today, we have Miss Kelly Fawner, and she is going to wrap up the year of Echo Ties and discuss the feature, uh, feature matching master matrix. And I'm going to go ahead and give it over to you, Kelly. Okay. Well, thanks, Chandra. Hi, everyone. I know I'm here again. The book ends of uh, the beginnings and the end of each of our uh, Echo Voices sessions for, for this year and the last couple of years. And for me, that's great because it puts me in a situation where, where I have to watch every session. So some of those analytics that Chandra's looking at is me watching the ones that I wasn't able to be present for. Um, and so it's it's great to catch up with all of that. So what we do today is do a review of the year, and then Chandra and I are going to go through that matrix with you all because it's massive if you've been, and I recognize faces here, so I know you all have been here. And I think some of the interesting things that we find out is manufacturer representatives and their reaction to the matrix because they often, you know, they give their company technology spiel um, using their own company terminology where we're trying to bring that terminology together. Probably one of the hardest things in not just augmentative and alternative communication, but in assistive technology in general is this idea of what are the names of these features? Because one company calls it symbol prediction. Another one calls it, you know, predicting words. You know, it just everybody's got their own flair um, for what they call certain features. So that's one of the reasons we wanted to have the master feature matrix this year was so that we could start to pull that together and have you compare apples and apples rather than it all seeming like it's apples and oranges. So I'm gonna grab the screen. For those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Kelly Fonner, as Chandra said. Uh, my background, I haven't put anything about myself up on this slide deck at all. Oh, well, that's the way it goes. Um, my background is as a special education teacher. I got started in augmentative and alternative communication as a paraprofessional when I was assigned to a kindergartner that was being evaluated for AAC and other assistive technologies. Um, and then my career kind of went in the direction of assistive technology where I was helping other teachers, and then I ended up helping people in my county. It's how these kind of jobs grow over time. I worked for um, the Pennsylvania equivalent of OTAP, which is called Patan. So I worked for that project for about 10 years, um, doing training and consulting and working with teams. And a big part of what we did at Pentech and how I learned this idea of feature matching was we had a, a long-term loan program. So every year we were lucky enough to have either a half million or a million dollars to give to individual children, um, students, preschool through, you know, graduation um, systems. And people wrote proposals for that, describing why that child needed that particular tool over another tool. And it was all across the system technology, it wasn't just AAC, but AAC was a big part of it. And so I really learned this idea of how do you best choose technology for individuals based upon their needs, not on what do the adults in the program know best, right? So, um, so that's that's you know, that whole feature match thing has been very familiar to me, and so we just uh, continue through with it because other people, not just the programs that I've worked in but other programs have definitely um, been a part of that. So I wanna click you on here. We know that it was a lot. Uh, it's a lot of information. Even just one of the sessions can be overwhelming, especially if it was a company that had multiple products. So I just wanted to do a quick breakdown of who we heard from. The other thing too, is we, we also had two sessions that weren't product related. Uh, some of you were with us two weeks ago when the awesome Carrie Huddleston um, presented, and she's such a valuable person 
that we have in the field of assistive technology and her knowledge of children and teams and bringing all of that together. So if you haven't had a chance to watch that one, that's that one's already up and you know ready to go to, to, to rewatch it. And then we had um, presenters from, from Oregon so that they could be Oregon specific as to the Medicaid coverage for school-based health services, for AAC and other devices for kids um, on your caseloads. So if you didn't get a chance to watch that, they had great information that's very specific to you all. The other thing I wanna encourage you to do when it comes to funding is the other people that are really helpful are the people at the companies. Now, it might not be the rep that you know the best, but the people that work full-time in funding at some of the really big box companies. So, you know, Toby Dynavox, Pranky, Romic Satillo, Assistiveware, they all have somebody that just works on funding. And when I, once teams that I'm on have made a decision about a, what AAC system, we're talking to that person at the company because that person at the company does this all the time. They know what forms you need. I'm going through this right now with, with a team of mine. They know what forms we need. They know what doctor's signatures we need to get. And rather than trying to sit back and figure this all out ourselves, we are going to the person at the company of the product that we decided upon, right? And so we're not uh, having the company influence us. Our decision is made based upon features and then we go to that company for, hey, help us get this funded. So they're very aware of things that are going on in, in every state uh, of, of the country and, and internationally what's happening with getting things funded. So they're, they're a great resource for you once you've made a decision. So some of the companies that we've heard from, Assistiveware was one of the most recent ones. Uh, talking about the new products with Proloco to Go and Proloco to Go Coach. Um, and of course, they mentioned some things about why you would pick Pro. Sorry, they did Proloquo. This is the here's the problem with the company's name and stuff, right? Sorry, guys. Um, so they did Proloquo, which is their newest product that has a much more consistent set of features. But for Proloquo to Go still exists. And I think that's one of the myths they tried to dispel was that Proloquo to Go was going to be going away. It's not going away anytime soon because it has features in it like switch access, like the ability to change, do some more symbol rearranging and changing than what Proloquo has in it. So those products. And then they also have some products that they didn't cover. So if you're a pod user, they have the SimPod app. Um, which you can print books, and then you can also um, have the electronic page set. Uh, we heard from Narayan from Avaz. Avaz is so instrumental in looking at new ideas. And so he shared Avaz and all the features of Avaz, including the new things, which are the intonations of the voices, which is a, a really cool feature. And we've tried to mimic, you know, over the last 25 years, We've tried to mimic intonations by going in and playing with where you put spaces and what letters you use to kind of phonetically spell things out, using a lot of exclamation points and question marks to try and get that kind of tilt up um, at the end of that lift at the end of those messages. But they really have um, have attacked that with the, those parts of it. Um, Forbes AAC and has has merged, right? So Forbes AAC um, has purchased CoughDrop. And so those of you that were CoughDrop users, Forbes is now the carrier of that. And, um, and so they talked about that and showed that throughout the session with it. Uh, Jason from PRC did a couple of sessions. So he talked mostly about the language organization and the features of the devices, and then came back on another date and talked about access. So for companies like PRC and Satillo that have both kind of types of AAC systems where they have a hardware AAC, 
They have a software app that you can download. It, you know, they're very feature rich across the board, but trying to figure out the differences between some of the products can be a little bit more challenging. The nice thing to know about these companies that have multiple products is that they often have their own version of a feature match page up on their website. So while you may have kind of made a decision about a particular language set, but you're not quite sure which device to have it put in, take go back to that company's website and look for that kind of information. And then the other companies that presented, uh, another company that presented multiple sessions was Smartbox. So Smartbox is another one of these mergers that we've had over the last uh, year, year and a half, where they've purchased Talk to Me technologies. So we have things from Talk to Me technologies that they've been doing, um, and also some of the features that people are really interested in, like looking at eye gaze. So this is one of the companies that Chandra had talked to us specifically about um, their products to help train eye gaze, like Look Lab and some of the other. In fact, I they showed a art pro, an art product I think called Mind's Eye, and I was like, I don't know this. I have, I have a student that uses eye gaze on her Toby Dynavox, but with Grid software. So she uses Smartbox technology software and to, uh, Toby Dynavox hardware. Um, and she's very interested in being creative. And so it was it was fun to see that little app. I kind of grabbed that right away. Um, and we've been um, trying to get up and running using that with her iGay system. The other thing that um, Smartbox talked about was um, two of their lesser known um, le uh, language structures, which is VocoChat, which is a pragmatically based structure, and then Supercore. So Supercore is their main way of organizing things that comes with Grid. When you open up, you see all the different versions. So if you didn't, if you didn't get to see those, those are two really different language organization systems, but could be in the same product. So it's something to take a look at. I, I talk about innovation. I always like hearing from Rebecca from Therapy Box because they always have something new that they're doing. Their predictable tool is one of the ones that consumers that use text-based um, communication. So typing words out, using word prediction, using pre-created uh, phrases and sentences, but all with text on the screen. Um, is one of the premier ones that text users use in, in the field of AAC. They probably are the, the uh, ones that I have kind of the most rapidly paced conversations with of people that are using text-based systems. And then, of course, they showed the opposite end of the spectrum of was seen and heard. So that where many individuals benefit from having a visual scene and then being able to communicate within that scene or on the edges of that scene. So they showed really two ends, uh, different ways of not just the typical grid-based layout of symbols on a page that keep changing. Um, and so that's a, a real comparison there. And then um, from Toby Dynavox, they talked about TD Snap. And the different things that are built into TD Snap, um, so that you and they talked about access. They kind of went through the whole, all of the the features of that product. Chandra, did we miss anything in this list? I don't think so. I think uh -huh. you got it all. All right. And surprisingly, we do know that there are other companies, right? There's companies that Chandra reached out to that didn't have a representative that was available. We only had so many time slots. So we're very interested as we go through this is we want to be talk, thinking about and, and hearing from you about what else you're interested in seeing. Um, because part of our discussions will be about for next year, what will it look like um, with, with all of this? Do we keep going along this path? Do we go back to AAC implementation kinds of strategies? So that's some of the stuff we want on your mind.
So with all of those company reps, Chandra, um, well, Chandra and I, Chandra did most of the work here, um, I'll tell you. Uh, we started with a feature feature match matrix that was publicly published up on Boston Children's Hospital with John Costello and his team. And so we looked at that. We looked at the features that were a part of that list. It was very, their list is very much tied to dedicated devices and didn't have as all of the features listed that we knew now existed in many of the non-dedicated systems being a tablet plus a, a AAC app. So we really wanted to add to their feature match list. And so we're very grateful that we had something to start with. And then it became a matter of expanding it and really looking at and, and helping people who were new to AAC, even though it's very overwhelming, this first category came out because of that. You know, what is this tool for and what else can it be for? So we hear people talk about using, you know, AACs for expressive communication, but we also know that some of our students benefit from the receptive end of people using AAC to talk to them, um, that it helps them receptively, it helps them learn the language, it helps to see people model. And then we also know that some of the products have expanded their range and have things for organizing and behavior and those types of things that fit into executive functioning um, types of controls. So the idea was to be able to start out the matrix with that, and then we tried to build this matrix into the different groups. So I'm just going to do a quick review of the groups, and then we're going to go, well, Chandra's going to pull the matrix up so we can take a look at some things. So we have that purpose. We have like some, one of the most important things of language structure. So what's the vocabulary laid out like? Um, what kinds of voices come out of this system? Because there is difference when you're in a dedicated device versus a tablet that's Windows-based, a tablet that's Chrome-based, and a tablet that's iOS-based. So that, and the voices are one of the things that get really impacted by the platform um, that you're on. In addition to that, looking at speech settings, Chandra was awesome about talking to the uh, representatives about what languages, because we know that many of our students in school don't just have one language spoken in their community, right? They have language at, at their school community, their home, and maybe multiple languages um, based upon, um, you know, their family and, and their family's culture. So we, we, you know, Shonda was always making sure that people talked about that. Um, and if they did it, I do love that you would quiz them about like, is that coming? <laughs> is that is that something that's going to be on the drawing board? Because I think often the companies that are based in the UK often have a better hold on multiple languages and knowing that people are going to speak German and French in a family. But I think when we get to English-based companies, they just think everybody's going to speak, you know, American English. Um, and so, and then we get, but and then the Americans get thrown when we get um, products. Like what, if you look at uh, Smartbox Grid, when you first open up those language systems, they are European based English, right? So the Canadians are happy because their spell, the spelling is in the queen. Oh, I should say now the King's English, right? Uh, but the Americans were always having to fiddle with spellings and and words and and understandings of different types of words for some of those European English products. So that's always a, a tricky um, part to getting up and running with some systems. And that's the same thing with symbols. Some symbols make sense to young children. Some symbols make sense to old our older students. Um, I think that the in the assist of wear presentation, uh, Barbara did a really nice example of how and and Pam talked about how like the word chicken, chicken in your food 
the symbol that goes along with that might be different than chicken, the farm animal. Right. And that at what level of understanding, that just was such a great example that I was just here with, of course, um, that for some individuals, the chicken that they eat has no connection to the little two legged and wing cr critter that's running around at the farm. Um, and so they use symbols specifically for those different meanings. Um, and then we do know that for some individuals, they can eventually merge those over time. Uh, there's another there's a good example that we do in pod training where we look at insects like a butterfly. We're not going to ask a kid to combine for a compound word like that, the word butter in the food section and fly in the insect. So butterfly is a symbol within the vocabulary set. But if I'm in food, and I'm a big lover of fruit salad. <laughs> Not everybody needs a symbol of fruit salad, maybe the lover of fruit salad. But if I happen in the lunch line to see fruit salad, I can in my food section combine the word fruit and salad to say fruit salad. So, it's, you know, it's just interesting how some systems allow you that type of flexibility. Right, that we don't always have to have every individual word and we can be more descriptive with what we're we're doing. So that whole idea of customization um, and how much customization was explained by the, the different representatives and then feedback, you know, what kind of visual um, is presented? Do they have magnification? Those types of features that might be very specific but critical to one individual and not critical to another student. And then getting into those things like access and rate enhancements, like word prediction and symbol prediction and pop-up windows and how all of those kinds of things. And then of course, there's always the miscellaneous, how much stuff costs, support, do they have loaner products? Those things are all heavy influencers of um, our AAC system. So I want to see if you guys have any comments or questions before we go to that matrix. Things to add? Um, Jane here was just asking about uh, if assistive wear was on the, on the matrix. Um, it, it is not, I believe, I don't believe that they provided me a matrix to put on there. If so we, they, if they did, then <laughs> I apologize and I didn't get it on there, but I, I think maybe they, they didn't get me one. So that's something that in the next, you know, next couple of weeks we'll, we'll take care of either getting one of them to do it or, uh, you know, Chandra and I'll do it so we can, We'll make sure that everything that was shown this um, year is represented. Are you ready for me to share that? Yeah, I'll stop sharing. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Let's yay. See. This actually is amazing. I hope you recognize how amazing that this is, um, and you know, even though we might be missing one company at this point, we've got a good representation of what we've all listened to, either live or recorded um, this year. So those categories that we were talking about, you see are represented in the different color groups. So we try to, to, share, to share that. Um, some companies might have like, Chandra, go over to your left, three, two columns. To column move G. you out of the way um, here real quick. Go to column G. So I like when you see this kind of thing where underneath the smart box grid for iPad, you know, where they give you that like only if it's on the iPad, not if it's on something else, you know, um, underneath the PRC Satilla with the Via Pro and the Via Mini, that, you know, what type of, 
put, can you do anything with a smartphone? You know, only if you're using those two languages, if you're using touch chat or you're using dialogue, right? So if you're using those um, choices that you have within those products. So I think it, it's nice to see those, those types of things. Let's see, keep going down a little bit and we'll take a look at, you'll see that in the blue section is about the different languages. So looking at the type of language structure. So is it an activity-based? So many of us are used to activity-based systems being on individual boards, the words you need to do puzzles, the words you need for snack, the words you need for circle time, those kinds of things. Can you have that on that type of a layout? Do you have access to the alphabet? We know more and more how important having access to the alphabet from the very beginning is. And so seeing which products have that access. Categorical, so does it categorize things, emotions, action words, descriptive words? Is that a way um, that that certain product can be? And, and the interesting thing with some of these products is it really depends upon which of the language sets that you have opened up. Is it a product that can be used for gestalt processing, right? So having things put into phrases and in sentences, and that's where you'll see where there may be some products that have some of that built in, but other ones where you need to program it in, that it's possible, but you'd program in those messages that are very specific to your student. Um, linguistics, so that's got to do again with that layout. Can I build a sentence with this um, product? Oh, thank you, Shonda, keep going through all of here so that you can see that not every product has every one of these language possibilities. And please don't translate that into, and I think this is the thing that scares the manufacturers the most, is that the product with the most X's wins. <laughs> Like, like that's the best. And it truly can often be that if it's a product that has every feature, it's one of the harder products to learn to use, right? Because there's so much. That they they did say that in about the assistive wear folks. Yeah. They said the Proloquo was made to not be broken. Yeah. Proloquo. So it, yeah, yeah. Proloquo. Yeah. And where Proloco to go, you can do a lot more things with it. And so, but I don't want people, you know, looking at this and saying, well, which product has the most X's? That's the one that we're going to get all the time, because that might not necessarily be the right way to go for every student. Some students, you need simplicity, right? It just needs to do these three things and it doesn't need to be any busier um, than that. Um, so other things that um, are become, are popular are motor planning layouts. So currently, I think we only have two products that have motor planning layouts, but we have hardware that that layout can be put into. Um, visual scenes, as I mentioned with um, the therapy box tool seen and heard, and then also uh, Toby Dynavox has their snap scene. So are there ways in which visual scenes can be put in um, to products if it if it isn't there already? So you'll see some of that where there are templates or online grids that you can download and add them um, into it. So, I mean, for me, that's one of the biggest categories on this. So certainly, the you know, a lot of companies are really similar with their voice output. They're very similar with... Um, their accessibility features, although not all products have switch access and things like eye gaze access or add-ons, add or it's a, a companion product. You buy this if you're looking for eye gaze, you buy another product if you don't need it. Wow. Yeah, Sean, some of those apps you want to add about this. Yeah, some of those, some of those are apps only. And so they rely on 
like the iPad, for instance, for their accessibility features as far as eye gaze or like you said, an, a, an add on um, mm -hmm. camera, you know, like the Hero camera and they'll have a case that you put the iPad in and then it, it works. Um, yeah. Yeah. So that platform piece, knowing what platform you're on, knowing what platform that your system supports, you know, what did platform do your IT people know the best? So they're going to be able to help you with yeah, what um, can the iPad do? Yeah. Do you guys know what the iPad can do? Because it can do some cool stuff. So let's keep going down. See if we've got any other things to point out here. So here's where the purple section is with all the voice output. And then the pink section are some of the settings. So those are both about voice. So not just about the voices themselves, but what are some of the other things that you can do? One of the, the newer things that's happening with voice output is voice banking. So for um, individuals that want to record their current voice that they may be losing over time or recording the voice of someone else that it becomes the voice in their system. That personalization of the voice, um, not just recording a voice, but having somebody bank the sounds of their voice output so that those sounds can be made synthetic and integrated into a system as the chosen synthetic voice. So that new words can be said, not just the words that were recorded um, and, that we were kind of Kelly, using for a long time. Um, I know they, when I was talking to the vendors about voice banking, um, this really meant that their system was, would work with voice banking rather yeah. than they don't have really? like an intrinsic voice banking application built in or anything. Yeah. So there are different, and I think oh, I'm trying to remember, there's one of the, the presentations that did a nice job at telling us who the voice banking companies they were working with. So there's several different projects across the, the U S um, one of them out of Boston children's hospital and, and others that do the voice banking and then yes this feature is that it will it's compatible with with a new voice that would be created all right so let's keep going down <laughs> so when we get into the features of symbols so we know that there are you know a, a kind of there used to be a more symbol sets, believe it or not, in the, the 80s and early 90s. And so some symbol sets have consolidated, um, but symbol sets get very specific for, for individuals. And, and I find that they are, are very specific for adults that interact with individuals who are using AAC systems. So, but making sure that symbols, maybe are they modifiable? Can you have things like you seeing things with skin tones? So representing that a person um, themselves rather than just a blank stick figure, which is not, you know, a, a true representation for, for many users. And then keep going down there, Chandra. Other this things is the big one. <laughs> yeah, this, that, you know, right along with the language structure, now how is that presented in the displays? So are there displays that, um, and you know, are they dynamic displays? Are they a static display? Do they have, you know, what type of orientation is it? Are they, you know, strictly horizontal? Can they be whichever way? Like if you're turning an iPad, will the display change with you? to portrait mode, um, are there visual scenes? There's a lot of pieces in this display section. We look at how are some of those rate enhancements handled such as pop-up windows um, and being able to 
have a split screen so I can have my communication on one side of a system and have the, an application that I might be doing in reading or math or something else or leisure um, on the other side. So this is another area that's innovative for companies. And then of course, not just the displays themselves, but what are some of those things, all the different ways that you can customize displays. There are so many. We put so many on this list. <laughs> well, and part of this list grew as we were working with the different manufacturers because they just couldn't find something in our original grid that represented um, a feature that they were trying to um, explain and represent in the list. And then both visual and auditory feedback. What are some of the things that different devices can do? We find that, you know, as Chandra said, companies that have apps are reliant upon the platform. So whether it's an iPad platform or a Galaxy tablet platform, they're reliant upon these kind of features from the platform rather than what's built into the app. So there's a little bit more flexibility in companies that have their own dedicated devices to, to kind of really uh, play with the feedback that features give you. So being able to highlight as they go, um, being able to click on individual cells and get auditory previews. So some of the things here in the feedback um, section are also about access. So being able to um, touch a button, hear what it is without it being announced out of your system. So that idea of auditory preview, or that's another one that companies call different things. Some call it the auditory phishing, some call it auditory review. So every company has its kind of own name of that. Listen to it before you say it um, feature. And then all the ways, the blue section is all the ways that are rate enhancement. Are they doing things like abbreviation expansion? Are they able to store phrases? Can Will it correct automatically? Um, will, can you have all the different types of prediction that are, that's available across AAC products like letter prediction and phrase prediction? and word prediction and symbol prediction. So lots of lots of those features are, and you'll see how this isn't one that everybody's got everything, right? So if one of these features is really important to your consumer, then you've got to take a look and see what, what language or what products really have that, um, that feature. I have a student that did a lot with abbreviations and then so he would put in two or three letters and then it would expand into a phrase or expand into a word. Um, and that used to be a really hot feature 30 years ago. And then it kind of got dropped because not a lot of people were spellers and using that. But we do see that there are some companies that have found, oh, we still need to have this option because there are people that are out there and want to reduce the amount of keystrokes by doing things like logical letter coding, where you hit the first letter of every word in your message. Um, so those kinds of things just make it faster for our text-based communicators. Well, and if you think about how we communicate via text, right? We're all BRB, R-O-L-F-T, like... <laughs> It's one of the reasons that for some of the companies that let that feature go, brought it back in the world of texting, right? Yeah. And this is and another then, big one. <laughs> yeah, another big section because there's a lot to do with yeah. access. And I can't tell you how many times Chandra and I modified this section. We really don't. Oh, no, we don't have all the words that have to do with switch access. <laughs> 
So we, you'll see what we did is we tried to hit the big categories of access here in the first six or seven features. And then as you go down the, the list, you'll see that we looked at touch selection. So Chandra's got that in bold. So down on the left, Chandra. Yes, right column. here. So touch selection. And then what are some of those subcategories of touch selection? And then we would go down and hit another big category of scanning. So what about scanning and the, all the different features? So we tried to keep these features and sub features together that made sense together. So the features that have to do with scanning, this features that have to do with touch selection. And again, this access thing, it, um, this is really, some of them are relying on their the device that you put the software on. Right. So you'll see Avaz has a ton of no's in here, <laughs> but really it's about the iPad. If you put it on an iPad, and then the iPad can do some of those things if you know how to set it up. Yeah. So that's why you see like that top of that column says a Vaz AAC software only. So it's not about, it's just about the software, what the software can do. And then here's that, that category of others. So the other things that influence us, the type of support that companies give, uh, and, you know, whether it's webinars and what they do with their warranties and which mostly impacts the hardware items, um, what they have as far as tutorials, and then what kind of live support they have. Do they have phone support? Do they have, you know, on-site support that you people that will come out and help you on site? Um, and that's going to be very different based upon how a company is structured with representatives or they might be functioning entirely. There are some AAC companies that function entirely online. I was really surprised at how much support pretty much everyone had and tons of training available on their websites. Yeah. Yeah, you just, you know, once you choose a product, you really are supported in that getting up and run, getting funded, getting up and running with it, um, and implementation and, and evaluation of effectiveness. The really, these, we, you know, we've been mostly dealing with the really large companies this year. So these are people that have brick and mortar, you know, office buildings where they've got troubleshooters and all of that stuff that's happening in-house and have representatives in the field. So they kind of have both layers of help, a main structure and a local structure. You know, as you start to look at companies that are software only, like Avaz and um, Therapy Box, you're less in that category that they don't have a brick and mortar building here in the United States. They might somewhere else, right? But not here in the US. They don't have um, individual representatives, but they do have people that they are connected to in this country that um, know their products and can be a, of a local assistance to you. So they handle that local assistance in a different way. And then some of the other miscellaneous things, some of them have to do with executive functioning, like having timers, you know, making visual schedules or, or displaying visual schedules. So, and then getting into things like, can I use my technology, my AAC technology, basically as a work tool to be able to do web-based authoring, to be able to um, view things other than just my AAC system. Now we know that for some students having their AAC system be more than just their voice can be tricky where we have some kids that we, you know, lock that down and this is their voice and that's all it is. But certainly, uh, you know, we have individuals that handle that in multiple ways. One of, you know, I, uh, I just did an interview, oh, dude, this dear nine-year-old, 
um, I'm in Wisconsin. And we have in Wisconsin, we have an organization called the Wisconsin AAC Network. And it's headed up by um, a young man well, in his 20s who um, who uses an AAC system by the name of Mike Hipple. And Mike found an article that was out on kind of the local news and in, uh, in Milwaukee that a nine year old, old third grader decided that he wanted to do for his black belt service project, putting a playground board up on his playground at his school because he knew that there were friends in his grade and, and other kids at school that when they were out for recess, that they didn't have a way to talk to anybody. So he went through this whole service project. Well, we interviewed him um, last week for our newsletter. And Mike, the, the guy that uses AAC, that's my colleague um, in this program. So he's got an eye gaze system. He also runs at the same time, hit Zoom from his eye gaze system. So he can be doing the interview as well as managing our Zoom channel. Um, all of those things are happening on his AAC system, right? And and for for he is an eye gaze user. So for him to try and operate multiple technologies would be much more difficult than having it kind of all in one in his AAC system. So it was, and, the, and the, I think it blew the little boy in his mom's brains when they found out that Mike was talking with his eyes because they had only ever seen kids touch an iPad, right? Or a communication board. And when we explained to him that Mike was talking with his eyes, he just, oh, well, you, only like a nine-year-old can. It was fabulous. All right. So that's the matrix. And that's the filled out matrix. So the next question becomes, and I'm going to grab the screen from Chandra. What, what do you... What do you do with that, right? Like, what do we do with all of that? Um, so using this content, and I'll go back to that other slide in a, in a minute, but what the idea is, now that we have this information, how do you then use it for your individual students? So we've been through other sessions throughout the, you know, the OTAP um, Echo series where people have talked about the set framework. So that idea of the student, the environment, tasks, and tools. Often people only do the set. They only do that first page. The second page is a feature match page. Um, and so this takes tools to a deeper level. So the idea that the features, now in, in uh, the original layout of this, the features are across the top and the tools are down the side. But, you know, we just because of space and electronics, we flipped it. And so you can always flip it when you use it. So the idea is for you to think of your student. So this is from one of my real students, like two years ago, I think it was. Um, and we were thinking, well, what are the features that were really important to her? Um, and this was a 10-year-old that had been using a go talk, a physical go talk. Right, so she had some experience with AAC and they're trying to get her more vocabulary because there's only so many pages on those physical goal talks. You know, I get five pages that I take in and out and she had the 20 symbol version. So she had, you know, a hundred words, but she's 10 years old. She's got more than a hundred words to say. So the things that were really important to her was having core and activity organized vocabulary. That's what, the people around her felt was her best structure for wor finding words and using words. She was most familiar with PCS symbols. So picture communication symbols, those are the board maker symbols. And she had been using some photos um, as well. She still was in a process of picture exchange, which is why there are some photos. So in some of her environments, like going through the school cafeteria line, um, 
it was easiest for her to exchange symbols um, with what she was asking for and a couple other situations. And that was all, certainly starting to be faded, but you know, we just didn't want to rip that strategy of communication away from her. And I think sometimes people, you know, they think, oh, well, we're moving to high tech. So all the stuff we used before doesn't matter anymore. It is critical in transition between low tech and adding high tech. Because I never remove somebody's low tech system. You never know when you need it as a backup. Um, they also felt as though she needed some messages recorded. She is very enthusiastic. They wanted to be able to record some, you know, yells and and the school cheer and I forget all the things that were other kinds of things that she had a great high up that she wanted, you know, that they wanted to make sure they didn't lose that from her. The other thing that we started to explore was color coding, was how that made an impact upon her. So we were asking some questions. How does she categorize vocabulary? What other symbol sets might she be able to use? How can we best represent fringe so that it's not all photographs in this picture exchange communication book? Um, and how was she going to do with synthetic speech? Because she was used to the recorded speech that came out of the go talk. Um, and they weren't at that point, they weren't with the go talk, physical go talk. They weren't doing anything with color coding. So some of the potential products and apps that they were looking at, they've got listed down here on the left hand side. They were going to look at what do we have now? So always comparing it to what we have now. Right now we have the GoTalk 20. Then we could look at the GoTalk Now app running on an iPad with one of the core vocabulary layouts that it comes with. They were looking at Proloco to Go and they were looking at Lamp Words for Life. So those were the, the ones that they were most familiar with. They wanted to kind of look at how the features worked within that system with the systems that they were looking at with the features that they felt were the most important. And see, they don't got they don't have a list of a thousand features, right? They, they here are the four most, five most important things um, for them. And, and there's no rule that you're just looking for five or six. There's just some things that really influence decision making. So then the next thing that they looked at was not which one wins, but what are they going to start with in trials? So if I grab my, I thought I could draw. So over here in the last um, column, you see that they're looking at trying out the Go Talk Now with core vocabulary first, and then they're going to give Proloquo to Go a try. So that's one of the things that they've done. Now, what I tend to tell people is as you're trialing things or after you've done a trial, you want to come back and look at these features based upon your trial. And so that we often then rate on a scale of one to five, what did you think about the organization of the Go Talk Now with Core? What did you think about the pictures in Go Talk Now? What did you think about the ability to do exchange or start to fade from exchange? What did you think about the synthetic speech? What did you think about the color coding? So they they kind of rate each of the features and then they did the same thing for Proloquo to go. So that then has, gives them something to look back on rather than trying to remember, oh, well, we had that Go Talk Now vocabulary two months ago. We just got done with the Proloquo to go. That's the one we remember better. So that's the one we're getting, right? So, so we want to make sure that, that they're thinking about all of the things that they've looked at. There are some places out there that can help you with finding features of products. Um, um, Angela Morad, oh, Amazing Kids, is amazing. Um, she just updated her tech space. Oh, that's what I was working on with one of the students. She just... Um, updated her text page feature list. Now, some of these things are free on her website. 
Some of them you have to get off of her teacher pay teacher account, but she's always keeping those up to date. The other place that ha often has information on features is Practical AAC. So I tend to go to Practical AAC. I type in a search topic like feature matching and seeing, you know, what comes up. Other things to remember is also that you've got loan programs, right? So you have you have your loan program there in Oregon that you can borrow from. And the company representatives that were with us this year talked about their loan programs as well. So especially for the dedicated devices, they often have rent to purchase abilities. So the money that you might pay on monthly rentals goes towards the purchase of that device. So that's some of the how some of the dedicated devices are handled um, in funding wise and, and up to funding. So that's, that's our look at the year and the support that's there. I want to go back, just back to show you one more slide deck. Because we mostly, we focused on high tech, right? So this year we focused on the high tech systems, high tech apps. Um, last year, so in 22-23, one of the presentations, oh, actually this is 2021. So this is in the 2020-21 Echo recordings. I did a session on low tech AC systems. So if you want to take a look at this kind of a feature match matrix, in low tech for, you know, companies like um, Praetorian and Inclusive and AbleNet and enabling devices and adaptivation, take a look. You've got some um, information here on the categories that we determined were the big categories of features for low tech. So I didn't want to bypass that. So with that. Let's chat about it. What and I'm putting things? that uh, link for that particular episode in the chat. Oh, great. Thank you. So I guess we're, you know, we're interested in, was this a helpful year for you? Um, hearing all of these companies and, you know, if it was, why was it? And if it wasn't, what, what could we have done differently? Yeah, this part's super, super important for us so that we can really give you what you guys need. Um, because it was a very different year. You know, we've not had a Echo Voices year where it's just been about products. No, no. And we did that because people the previous year told us that they didn't have enough product knowledge. <coughs> and so that's, that's why this was put together. So what do you guys think? Um, do I need to bring Apple in and have them give you guys a rundown on how to do, how to set up accessibility features on the, on the iPad? Is there another topic that you guys want to hear about on AAC? Do we need to focus more on new users? Oh, okay. So Sarah says that would be great. Which part was that? That was great, Sarah. All of it. <laughs> I think, was that the iPad access? Yeah, Apple, bringing Apple in. If you don't want to unmute Nad, yeah. Okay. You can always do a thumbs up. Yeah. Um, I know that I've been, we've had Apple at our um, AT Ties conference. And, uh, and this is um, kind of uh, developing still, but um, I believe Deb is working with Apple uh, for the, the following year. They're going to be working with us on a, a new series of workshops that she's oh, nice. got in the works. So that's exciting. Not sure what that's going to look like. More to come on that, I'm sure. <laughs> what else do you guys need to hear? Or what was most helpful this year? Um, 
Can Betty, Betty, can I call on you? You are such a, an avid, <laughs> an avid joiner in our discussions and um, our webinars. Would you like to chime in? Maybe. No. That's okay. Um, I guess uh, one of you know one of the things we really want to know is: Do you want to continue with products, or do you want to go back to application of AAC? Because we can continue with products. I sent Chandra a list of probably 20 more companies that we could be looking at. Um, you know, attainment and Gus and some enabling devices, some of <laughs> Okay, Jennifer. <laughs> a little bit of both. Are there some, is there a company that we didn't cover this year that you really want to have? So if we do both, we won't be able to cover 20 companies. <laughs> I know that I had reached out to Logan Tech. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that they they are still interested, um, though the schedule didn't work out quite right. So I could bring them in if that's something yeah, I mean, you guys we're are at, interested with We've hit the really big, big box companies, right? Yeah. So so now it's about, well, except for attainment. Attainment's one of the big box ones that we didn't really yeah. get. I really wanted one. to get them in to talk about the Go Talk because um, yeah. they do have some kind of neat things. Uh, they have some Braille um, oh, yeah. yeah, items that I thought were neat that I saw at ATIA. Any other thoughts from you guys? If you are, I mean, and I know that people listen to webinars while you're doing other things. I do it all the time. Uh, so, so it isn't always, you know, a good time for you to let loose and, and, and chat, but we really, we really need guidance on this. And so please email Chandra. You know, if there's companies like Attainment and Logan and Gus and Enabling Devices, School Health, you know, any of those companies that you really want to hear from, or if there's another topic, you know, we, because we had an open space, Chandra was able to put in Carrie Huddleston, you know, we made sure that we got the funding people in, in the midst of all of this, we kind of did that in the middle, the funding, so there was a bit of a break from company chatter. Um, but if there's another presenter out there, because, you know, there's a ton of awesome presenters in the world of augmentative and alternative communication, many of which we've had over the last three and four years, but there are still new people that are out there. So if you have a name of somebody that you've heard of or seen in another forum, you know, this is our time that we reach out to people for next year. We try and get on their schedule before the end of the school year, because otherwise their schedule, just like the rest of us, by the time September rolls around is booked up. So and you guys will get a survey. So if you want to take a minute and really think about it and then put it in that survey, I'll get it that way too. Yeah. And maybe Chandra, if we're able to, because I think IECO captures everybody that's attended through the year. Yes. Maybe we could just do it end of the year. What do you want next year? Kind of thing, if that's possible. I think I can. I think I can. Yes. Yes, I can. I can yeah. send out an email, a mass email. <laughs> because, you know, we can, Kelly and Chandra and Deb can decide what we think is good, but it's not going to mean anything. If it's not stuff that you all want to attend. Yeah, I, I don't, um, I do not use AAC, nor, <laughs> nor do I work with kids with AAC. So I'm not the best person you guys should tell us, but um, Sarah has her hand raised. Sarah, you want to? Yeah, I just please. wanted to comment. Um, it's been really helpful to learn the products that are available. And I guess just though, there's like such a wide variety that, um, for me, I didn't realize like there were so many. Mm -hmm. um, 
which has been really good. But I think also like within those presentations, you know, they would kind of touch on how to use some of this stuff. So having, I think having a little bit of a mix of both of, you know, this is what it is and this is how you can apply it to your, um, to your practice, I think would, is very helpful. It just kind of, so you're not like left with, okay, there's this product and now, <laughs> now where do I go to get training or how do I use it or how can it be ethical in my practice? Um, so just that, yeah, it's been helpful to have a little bit of both. So I think for me, continuing that would be really helpful. Um, yeah, it's nice to have the product representatives that used to be practitioners. Yeah. Right? So like they can Jason. give that perspective that you're talking about, that this is how it can be used. This is, so you know that they're not just somebody that. It's pushing their product. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I will tell you, because it was hard when A I shouldn't say when AAC first got started. Okay. So I, I'm in my 40th year of teaching. Um, and when the kindergartner that I was assigned to, when we were exploring AAC systems, the people that came out and showed you AAC tools in the early 80s were the same people that were showing us wheelchairs. So they it was all durable. It was all considered dur durable medical equipment. So you had one DME dealer that would come out and show you. And those people, <laughs> they they knew more about the wheelchairs than they did about the AAC system. I will tell you that. And so in the mid 80s, when companies really started to have uh, late 80s, when, when they started to have reps that would come out, it was like a miracle of somebody, like, oh, this person actually knows what this is. Because uh, I was just used to dealing with all of these people that knew wheelchair parts. And then here's just something somebody could talk with. Um, mm -hmm. And all they could tell you is whether it had letters or pictures. Um, and so it really is, it really is much more informative um, now than, than when many of us, many of us got started with it all. So I do <laughs> appreciate the people that can talk from a practitioner uh, perspective. Definitely. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. <laughs> um, yeah. As, as far as other training, is there other, um, other stuff that you're, you're looking for? Um, probably, but I don't know at the moment what it would be. And I think it's fair. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's those things you don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah. Or what's, yeah. Yeah, what's available. Yeah. And then we do have such a um, an archive of things. So um, some of it, yeah, we already have um, already in uploaded on YouTube. There's oh, yeah. more on in the archives. And I know that uh, we had talked about maybe kind of bringing a spotlight on some of what we already have um, because yeah. that training really just doesn't go away. Like last year we did so much on modeling mm -hmm. um, and that's a big deal right yeah yeah that's what jennifer's saying about te more on teaching aac modeling yeah yeah and if that's jennifer if that's a need that you have like an immediate need taking a look last year um matthew bod i think they were like the second session yeah. was um uh, matthew and it's the people from Talc, T A L C. I can never remember both their names at the same time. I either remember. I Jill. don't remember. I never Jill, remember yeah. Jill Center and Matthew Bond. Um, there's a, but they talk about the s'mores and how they teach s'mores. And then the year before mm -hmm. that, we had Tabby who talked about um, model like a pal. So both of those are really good. And, and everybody seems to include a little bit of modeling, but those two sessions stick out in my brain as ones that the full session was about teaching people how to model and what you're modeling. And I know that assistive wear did a modeling. Oh yeah. A modeling one too. I think it was specific for helping parents learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I'll put that in the, the, um, the Jill center and Matthew bod in the chat as well. And I think it's Tabby Jones. And I think that was from 2020. That might've been from 2021, 22. That sounds familiar. 
But yeah, I mean, you like can you can go to the YouTube channel and just like type in model and yeah, you'll see. Yeah, very good. Well, we don't want to delabor, the, you know, belabor this for everybody and hold you past our time here. But yeah. we really want to thank you for your participation this year. Um, I, it's been a very interesting year. I was able to catch up on all of my products and um, and we just want to make sure that we continue with good things for everyone. Chandra? Yes, thank you, everyone. And again, um, if you give yourself a minute and think about what it is that you and your teams need, uh, just throw it in in that um, survey or email direct, and and we'll we'll get that planned out for you.